Yeah. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Go on then. <laughs> Go on, you clown. How do? How we doing? So this week, Tuesday and Thursday, cheeky little vlog. I will try and get an interview up for the weekend. Big week for me, this. Uh, Strange Ways Unlocked, my second book, comes out on Thursday. I was on Steph's Pack Lunch, Channel 4, dinner time programme, yesterday, Monday. Not a bad show. The lass herself, Geordie Lass, she were nice. Uh, asked me some sensible questions and gave me a chance to answer them. Got a bit more TV this week, uh, quite a few radio interviews and some interviews for the press. However, Alas, <laughs> Alas is keeping my feet firmly planted on the ground. I am painting the stairs, emulsioning and painting the banisters today. She might allow me a cheeky beer tonight if I'm lucky. So the last little chat I put with Ray, talking about Charles Bronson as he was known then, and what Ray described, get her. <whistles> Got to watch him, horse muck. Come on you. What Ray described as an incident that could have been prevented. There was some inaction, again, as he describes. Um, Charles Bronson took a teacher hostage and that in effect got him lifed off when it went to court. Um, so it gets me thinking, incidents that I've been involved with um, where managers have made poor management decisions or incidents have been allowed to play out that could have been prevented. Not good. Come on, kid. I just mind him, there's a owner looks a bit cautious here with the dog in the lead. This way, kid. Good lad, walk straight on by. So the first one. I might have, I might have told this story when Ray was chatting, I'm not sure, but I'm going to tell you again. Come on, Stevie. I'm at Forest Bank Prison, private prison. On the Friday, I'm, I'm, I'm on the weekend, so I've worked Friday, Saturday, Sunday. On F wing I was on, F1. Yeah, there were 12 wings, A1, A2, through to F wing, F1, F2. On the Friday, there was intel, we were all told, Three brothers on B2, yeah? Normally, brothers wouldn't be kept together on a wing. At that time on F-Wing, uh, we had three or four pairs of twins. You know, they were told if you want to be padded up with your brother, then you keep your head down, they all did. However, three brothers on B2, so the intel was they were going to kick off over the weekend. So I consider myself lucky having people who comment and uh, a fantastic set of subscribers. You know, you've all got common sense, fantastic comments, super supportive. So you're all thinking, right, there's intel, three brothers are going to kick off. Sensible thing to do is to split them up. It is, they didn't. On the Sunday, I'm on my own on F1. That's normally the case. There's normally two of you for 86 prisoners. But on this day in the morning, my oppo went home. So I've been left on my own. The Oscar one shift manager phoned me early afternoon. Who you on with, Sambo? I'm on my own. What do you mean? My oppo went home this morning. I phoned you and told you. Oscar one, apologetic. I'll get you someone. He had no one. I knew he had no one. I says, I'm all right, mate. If you could get me a radio, <laughs> if, 
If you could get me a radio, I'd appreciate it. I had no radio, so I'm on my own on a wing. However, really good cleaners. That wing were pretty rough then. We took anyone, really good cleaners. If they'd have been, excuse me. If there'd have been any altercations or anything like that, the cleaners would have backed me up, yeah? Not because they were screw boys, you know, not because they were creeps or anything like that. Stephen, don't you dare go in that muck, little bugger. Because of how I was, I were decent people, treat people right, spoke to people right and got things done for people. Mid-afternoon, alarm bell. On the radio, you always turn your radio up, have a listen. It kicked off on B2, these three brothers. Now, one officer who was a good officer, working on there, got hit in the face with a metal bin. Yeah, broke his nose and that. Could have been prevented. Why they didn't do it? I don't know. Excuse me. I don't know. Strange ways. I'm on nights. I know what this decision was about. This decision was about a really poor manager. Uh, he was from down south. I know a lot of people down south who are decent people, cockneys and the like, so it's not about that. Okay. He, uh, it's one of them people that if, if someone crossed him or, you know, maybe had a bad word with him, it, it'd be forever. You'd be up against him forever. Stevie? Stay there, kid. Oh, he's gone all the way. So, I get a call on nights. I'm on the healthcare, could I go to segregation unit? We need you to get kitted up. So on nights, very few staff in any prison. Strange ways at that time. Just let me have a quick think, probably four. Healthcare, ah! Healthcare at that time, we had a couple, six. Uh, maybe 12, 13 staff in the prison. They're officers at that time. That would later change. So, our tools off down to the segregation unit. We had a briefing while get kitted up, full kit. Overalls, arm guards, shin guards, the lot. Gloves, riot helmets. There's a lad on E-wing outer. So E-wing, strange ways. On the bottom floor, you've got the segregation unit. Yeah? This lad, planned removal, not spontaneous. You know, he's kicked off. We're getting kitted up. We're having a briefing. I'm going to bring him down to the seg. E-wing outer was a bacon nonce VP wing, yeah? Sex offenders. Not everyone on there was a sex offender. So he gets kitted up, the briefing went something like, he's threatening staff, he's got a weapon, he's barricaded, he's kept the whole wing up, he's disturbing the cates. Nobody bothered that he's disturbing the VPs, but the cates, they don't want them upsetting. So we've had his briefing, I'm the shield man, big lad, daft Yorkshire lump. Procedure is, I see whoever's in charge, up to the cell door, back of the cell, giving this person opportunity, yeah, to surrender. So I can't see in the cell, I've got all my gear on, yeah, back of the cell. Manager in charge, this Southern softy, again, not, not all Southerners, it's just what he was. So me, shield up to the hatch, can't really see much, slams it up, back of the cell. That's what you give it, there's two lads, one on either side of me. I'm number one, I'm in charge. You've got number two, number three. If it all goes to plan when you go in, you hit them with a shield, yeah? I would be the head officer, the number one. I would protect the head. The other two officers would go for an arm each. You know, it works well. So, the cell door is open, the bolt is shot, and in I go with my two oppos, yeah? Screaming like blue thunder, adrenaline pumping. This kid, there's only one person, single cell. He's on the bed. 
head in his hands, sobbing his heart out. Now, being told he's got a weapon, yeah? So I've stopped, you know, I've stopped, shield in front of me. Other two guys, decent lads. A different three lads in this situation, he'd have got smashed, that lad, yeah? So he's on the bed, I knew him well. Not a dangerous prisoner, although anyone with a weapon can be dangerous. He was one of them poor copers, he wasn't a sex offender. He's what you would call a poor coper, which is why he was on that wing. Says to him, what's happening? Have you got a weapon? No, Mr. Samworth, he knows me now. You know, the kit on, he knows me. I said, right, I want you to stand up, yeah? Turn around, face the wall, I'm gonna search you. Which he did, I kept the shield there, when the lad searched him, no weapons. At this time, this idiot behind me, this manager is screaming to destroy him with a shield. The other two lads sensible, I'm in charge, nothing. The only person making a, a noise on this wing and disturbing anyone is this manager. He weren't happy. Anyway, we placed this guy in cuffs and we walked him very calmly to the segregation unit, yeah? We de-escalated that situation. The manager were pissed with me. He didn't like me anyway, or not so much disliked me, but I was annoying, you know what I mean? Because I'd, I'd make my own decisions and do my own thing. I got changed. Before I went back to the healthcare, you could get to the healthcare from E-Wing, where we'd just done the plan removal. Just went to the cell next door, light on. Couple of lads watching TV. You right, lads? Yeah. Has that lad been kicking off next door? No, boss. Not keep, it. no, no, no. The manager come to his door, started kicking off, shouting at him, threatening him. It's gonna get him bent up, gonna get him taken to the segregation unit. The lad had done no. He'd been on his cell bell, uh, asking him for a listener. That's a prisoner who's trained by the Samaritans to talk to people. Um, or the Samaritan's phone. You used to have a phone on the wing that you could hand over. It had just got one preset number so somebody could phone the Samaritans. If you're not from this country, it's an organisation, you can phone them if you're suicidal or whatever, and someone on that phone, trained, will listen to you. He'd done nothing, this lad. That incident was dealt with, some and nothing. Let's go to another incident now, very briefly. There was a lad, again, this lad was on E-Wing Outer, yeah? The non-swing, bacon wing, VPs, opposite the Cat A's. Again, not a sex offender, poor coper, extremely poor coper. Self-harmer, some of you are new to the channel, I have my own scale of self-harm. One to three, yeah, that's manipulation, if you're gonna score them. Four to eight, they're people who might have self-harmed for a long time. You know, might have been abused as a child or whatever. Not necessarily going to know or notify you unless it's something bad and needs attention. An eight, seven or eight, would be someone who would cut quite deep without being too graphic. And there's always a risk of infection and death. Nine or ten, quite definitely. High level of self-harm. Um, definitely risk of death. This lad was a nine or ten. Yeah, not wanting to end his own life, but he used to cut very deep. Horrendous wounds, and he also used to insert, again, without being too graphic, he would have an open wound and he would put things in it. Prison fork, prison knife, anything. I'm on shift in the morning. I'm not there at night. He'd been on his bell for whatever reason. This is what the nightman on healthcare reported to me. The manager who was on, it pissed him off. So the manager decided, yeah, because he'd self time he was coming to healthcare. But he was refusing to come to healthcare, this lad. Didn't want to come. And you don't have to, yeah? Just because he's self harmed he wanted to stay in his cell, he wanted to stay in the wing. Manager, no, you're moving, he refused. This lad was a big lad. About my height and twice, well, maybe not twice, um, it was a big unit though, 25, 25 stone at least. So he didn't want to come, he's refused. 
The manager is insistent, lost his rag, took all the staff in the jail, pretty much, and it took him, I don't know, an hour and a half to try and carry this lad several sets of stairs to get him to the healthcare. Yeah? Could have been injured staff. Uh, it's dangerous. You know, trying to carry someone a dead weight that big who doesn't want to go, yeah? And then they ceremoniously on healthcare because if someone's going to healthcare or you're gonna move someone, there's a couple of things you need to do. First of all, you need to check that there's a space because quite often the healthcare was full. There was no space. We had a cell that was out of action. We'd had a lad on dirty protest in that cell. Dirty protest, urine, excrement, whatever you want to call it, everywhere. Yeah, on the walls, bedding, dirty bedding, urine on the floor, it stank. So after an hour and a half, using all the staff, because he'd lost his rag, the manager, yeah, T to be fair, the nurse on nights and the lad that I took off from said they pretty much dragged him on, on a blanket, very unceremoniously, yeah. Not pretty, not good, uh, lots of paperwork. It, it was not done in a professional manner. And then they put him in a dirty protest cell. Again, this isn't a lad who is a VP, a sex offender, a bacon. Yeah, he's a lad who self-harms, a poor coper, poor mental health. They put him in a dirty protest cell. That's because the manager lost his rag. The sensible thing to do would have been patch him up, which the nurses did, and leave him there. No, in actions. I've gone on enough now. I need to go back to my painting. Like I say, um, thanks for all the messages of support. Strayways Unlocked, second book. Um, like I say, I will put a vlog up Thursday and hopefully um i'm going to be speaking to chris coming back on the channel talk about the charles bronson incident at hull his version and then like i say up to get him and ray gilbert together uh just to talk about these units really you know one officer who used to work on there another off uh, another officer another lad who was housed on there what it's all about whether it works you know the whole prison system stevie boy Again, thanks for all the kind comments and support for Ray. He's a good lad. He don't want money. He just wants to clear his name. Cheers. Stevie, come on then. <laughs> good lad. Sit yourself down. Eh? There you go. Cheers, guys. Thanks for coming. I'll see you.